On behalf of our team, I'd like to welcome you to Mount Carmel New Albany Surgical Hospital. We are delighted that you have chosen our hospital for your health care needs. We are dedicated to providing you with the best in surgical care. Let us know how we can make your stay with us as pleasant and rewarding as possible. The Mount Carmel New Albany Surgical Hospital specializes in the surgical treatment of bone, joints, and spine. The video presentation you are about to see has been created especially for you. We believe that the more information you have about your procedure, the better you'll be able to help make it a success. In this video presentation, you and your family will learn about your diagnosis, the procedure that you are going to have, and what to expect during your recovery. Most importantly, you will learn what you will need to do to prepare for your surgery, as well as what you can and cannot do after the operation during the rehabilitation period. If you have any questions when you finish watching this video presentation, please ask your nurse or contact your surgeon or their clinical staff. All patients are required to have pre-admission testing before surgery to assess if you are medically fit to tolerate the surgery. This may be scheduled with your primary care physician or discussed with your surgeon. All testing must be completed one week prior to your scheduled surgery date. Your doctor will advise you as to whether he wants you to keep taking your routine medication or not. Please be sure to review the patient information book that was given to you at your doctor's office and bring it with you to the hospital. Make arrangements with a friend or family member to accompany you on the day of surgery. Do not eat, drink, or smoke after midnight the night before your surgery unless instructed to do so by your doctor. This includes chewing gum, breath mints, or sips of water. Smoking must be stopped before the surgery and not resumed after the surgery in order to reduce the risk of wound infection and delayed healing. Check with your doctor to see how far in advance of the surgery you need to stop smoking. Smokers have twice the rate of wound infections, longer recovery periods, and are more prone to post-operative complications, especially involving the lungs. When you first arrive at the hospital, you will check in at the front desk located in the main lobby. From there, you will be directed to the registration department to complete any remaining paperwork. Please remember to bring a picture ID, your insurance card, and any required financial responsibility. We accept personal checks as well as major credit cards. Once your paperwork is complete, you will be escorted to our pre-operative waiting area. We request that your family remain in the waiting area during surgery so that our staff is able to keep them updated on the progress of your surgery. At the end of your procedure, your physician will speak to your designated family member either in the waiting area or on the telephone. If your family member needs to leave the waiting area and does not have a cell phone, we will provide one for their use while you are in surgery. Your family will be free to rejoin you once you arrive in our inpatient department located on the second floor. Finally, for the health of our patients, families, visitors, and staff, the Mount Carmel New Albany Surgical Hospital and campus are tobacco and smoke free. Prior to your surgery, you will be asked to sign a consent form, which allows your doctor to perform your surgery. Make sure you understand the procedure, risks, and options prior to signing. If you have any questions, please ask to speak to your surgeon before signing. On the day of your surgery, an anesthesia provider will talk with you to discuss what type of anesthesia you will receive. The anesthesia team consists of an anesthesiologist, who is a doctor specialized in the field of anesthesiology and a certified registered nurse anesthetist or CRNA. Aside from back and neck surgery, most orthopedic procedures can be performed with regional or nerve block anesthesia in combination with some type of sedation or general anesthesia so that you can still be asleep during your operation. Regional anesthesia offers many advantages over straight general anesthesia. It is less stressful on the body and it allows the team to use less anesthesia medication by concentrating the anesthetic on the area of surgery. This minimizes side effects like grogginess or nausea that many people experience. You will also wake up much more comfortably and usually can leave the hospital sooner as well. 
If you decide on a regional technique, it will be performed in the preoperative area only after we make sure that you are very comfortable with IV sedation. You will then be taken to the operating room suite where you will be given medication to help you fall asleep. One or more of the anesthesia team members will be with you throughout your operation. During surgery, we are working very closely to your nerves. Nerve injury can occur, but may improve or recover over time. Other infrequent risks or complications are bladder infections, delayed wound healing, prolonged fever, and temporary slowing of bowel activity. Death, although extremely rare, is always a risk of any surgery. After surgery, you will go to the recovery area or post-anesthesia care unit, PACU. No visitors are allowed in the PACU. As you awaken from the anesthetic, you may experience the following side effects. Blurred vision, dry mouth, chills, nausea, sore throat, and pain. Medication is available if you are having pain or nausea. The nurse will frequently check your blood pressure and pulse. It is normal to hear beeping of monitors that are checking and recording your vital signs. You will have oxygen running through a plastic tube in your nose. When you are awake and stable, you can be transported to the inpatient floor upstairs. You will be with us on the inpatient floor for one to two days. Welcome to the inpatient department of the Mount Carmel New Albany Surgical Hospital. Your room is equipped with many features to help you feel comfortable during your stay with us. Your bed and the room temperature are both adjustable to your comfort level. A call light system will allow you to let staff know when you need anything. In addition to cable TV and free wireless internet, each room is equipped with a DVD player, so feel free to bring your favorite movie from home. Our Founders Cafe offers an extensive room service menu available when the medical team says you're ready. The concierge will visit each day to bring your paper as well as assist with any questions you may have. Finally, there's a sleeper sofa in your room for a family member that may want to stay with you during your time with us. While we are in the room, let me take a moment to introduce you to the various people who will be caring for you during your stay with us. Each person on our team wears a specific color to signify their role in your care. Registered nurses are in royal blue. Techs are in maroon. Anesthesia personnel are in black. Physical therapists are in hunter green. Respiratory therapists wear pale blue. Case managers wear royal blue scrubs and a white lab coat. While you are here, our general medical physicians will be taking care of all your non-surgical needs. These physicians are available at all hours. They are similar to your family doctor. Beginning the day of surgery, you will receive a variety of treatments and medications to help you on your road to recovery. Treatments might include blood tests, EKGs, and or x-rays. A Foley catheter may be inserted into your bladder during your surgery. You may still have the catheter in place during your recovery. If so, it is usually removed early in the morning the day after your surgery. Medications will include antibiotics to help prevent infections and pain medication to help you remain as pain-free as possible. In addition, stool softeners and or laxatives may be used after surgery to help you regain and maintain normal bowel activity. The nurses will inquire about your bowel habits while you are in the hospital to help you with this. Nausea can be treated with anti-nausea medication. Most patients will receive a motion sickness patch behind their ear. If you have one, this patch will be removed the morning after surgery. Surgical infections can occur after surgery. Your doctor will order antibiotics to be given both before and after surgery to prevent infection. Signs of infection include increasing pain at rest and with activity, increasing swelling, redness, or tenderness in the area of your incision, persistent fever or chills, or drainage from the incision. You will be on oxygen for some time after surgery. It may be left in place when you go to the inpatient department or discontinued when the medical team determines that it is appropriate to do so. You may be connected to a heart monitor and you will have a sensor on your finger that measures your oxygen level. Your surgical dressing may be removed, changed, or reinforced. Pain medications can be given to you in many ways through your IV line, orally, or with a regional block anesthesia.
The nurse will ask you to rate your pain level during your recovery period. We use a pain scale, which goes from 0 to 10. 0 means no pain at all. 10 means the worst pain imaginable. Beside pain medication, there are other alternatives for pain relief, including watching TV, reading a good book, listening to tapes or music, and massage. Ice will be provided as ordered by your surgeon to minimize pain and swelling at the surgery site. Repositioning yourself frequently can also alleviate pain. Please do not wait until the pain is severe to ask for help. The more severe the pain, the harder it is to control. You may have some side effects from the anesthesia you have received or from your pain medication. Although your body gets rid of the anesthesia fairly quickly, the pain medication will continue to have an effect. The most common side effect is grogginess. Your thought processes and memory may be impaired for the first day or so. If a breathing tube was inserted during your surgery, you may experience hoarseness or a sore throat. These symptoms usually resolve on their own within 24 to 48 hours. Please let your nurse know if you have any questions related to anesthesia, your pain medication, or if you're experiencing nausea. On the day of your surgery, you will get ice chips. The medical team will determine when you are ready to resume eating solid foods. You will be given IV fluids until you are eating and drinking well or as needed to assist with your recovery. Blood clots can form in the leg veins after surgery. Signs of blood clots in the leg veins include increasing pain in the calf and back of the knee, increased swelling in the lower leg, and redness or tenderness along the inside of your calf or thigh. These blood clots can also travel to your lungs. Signs and symptoms of this include sudden shortness of breath, sudden chest pain, blood in your phlegm. To prevent this from happening, you will be encouraged to wear a mechanical device after surgery and to get up and walk and exercise. You will use this device at all times unless you are taking a shower. Your surgeon may also order a pair of white stockings called TED or TED hose. These stockings must be worn on your legs at all times. Your nurse, tech, and physical therapist will help you learn how to properly put on and wear TED hose. In order to prevent other post-surgical complications, such as pneumonia, our respiratory therapist will visit you frequently during your stay. Coughing, deep breathing, increasing activity, and the use of an incentive spirometer all help in preventing pneumonia. Please do your incentive spirometer exercises 10 to 15 times every hour, as these exercises are imperative due to the type of anesthesia you received. Physical therapy and exercises will be part of your post-operative routine and recovery. The day after your surgery will be similar to yesterday with some minor changes. Your surgeon and his or her partner will talk with you about your progress along with your general medical physician. Your medication may be changed. By now you may have progressed to solid foods. If so, a menu will be provided in your room so that you may order from our Founders Cafe. When you will be discharged will depend on your progress. You will not be discharged from the hospital until you have met your physical therapy goals and your doctor feels you are medically able to be released. A case manager will visit with you within 24 hours after your surgery in order to discuss your discharge from the hospital and what needs you will have at home. She will work with your insurance company to keep them informed of your care plan. Once your discharge goals have been met and upon the advice of your nurse, please arrange to have your ride arrive as early as possible. This will allow your discharge instructions to be given to you and your family member in a timely manner. Have someone stay with you at home for the first week, especially at night. Allow others to assist you with necessary tasks such as driving, cooking, cleaning, and shopping. Once you go home, you should call your doctor if you notice any of the following. Increased pain at the surgical site, edges of the incision are separating, nausea or vomiting, signs of infection, signs of a blood clot in your legs, burning when you urinate, or increased frequency of urination, nerve problems such as an inability to walk on your toes or heels, numbness or loss of bowel or bladder control, any other symptoms that concern you. When you are ready to go home, you will be given a list which contains all of your medications, those that you were taking before the surgery, and those prescribed by your surgeon. 
This list will contain instructions about when to resume taking your previous medications as well as how to take any new medications required after your surgery. There are many ways you can help yourself recover safely and more rapidly. First, you must participate in your recovery. No one can do this for you, although you will receive lots of assistance. You must communicate your pain levels so that adequate medication can be used to help you. You must follow your doctor's orders so that risks and complications will be minimal. Medication, mechanical devices worn around your calf, TED hose, blood tests, and exercises are prescribed to make your recovery as smooth and uneventful as possible. You must clearly communicate concerns about any aspect of your care and recovery so that problems can be addressed as quickly as possible. Remember that you are not sick. You've had surgery to help you walk and be more active again. We will give you the education, tools, and support you and your family need to succeed and have a rapid and safe recovery. Your spine supports your entire body. The spine includes bones called vertebrae, nerves called the spinal cord, fluid and cushions between the bones called discs. There are 24 bones in your spine divided into four sections, cervical or neck bones, C1 to C7, thoracic or chest bones, T1 to T12, lumbar or lower back, L1 to L5, and the pelvic bone or sacrum, S1. The disc is the cushioning material that is located between the bones and absorbs pressure and allows the bones to move. Spine problems can be caused by injury, arthritis, aging, or disc disease. Your particular spine problems have been evaluated by your doctor. He has recommended surgery for you based upon his evaluation of your specific symptoms, tests, and available treatment options. Remember that it is imperative for you to quit smoking prior to your surgery. Spinal fusions are less effective in patients who smoke and may cause the surgery to be repeated. The physical therapy department will help you to establish goals for your rehabilitation process, show you exercises to assist with increasing your range of motion and level of strength, and help you and your family prepare for your discharge from the hospital. If you arrive on a unit before 5 p.m. the day of your surgery, a physical therapist will talk with you about your plan of care and will get you up and walking within your hospital room. If you come to the unit after 5 p.m., physical therapy will meet with you the morning after your surgery. Physical therapy will work with you twice each day, beginning the day after your surgery, once in the morning and once in the afternoon, until you achieve your therapy goals and your surgeon determines you are safe for discharge to home. Physical therapy will teach you how to get in and out of bed, how to walk safely, how to go up and down stairs, how to perform your home exercises correctly, how to maintain weight-bearing restrictions, and how to follow spine precautions. Back precautions include no lifting over five pounds, no overhead reaching, avoid bending or arching your back, bend at the hips or knees, avoid twisting your back, change positions often, stand up tall and maintain good posture at all times, limit sitting to 30 minutes at a time. Your surgeon may order a back brace for you to wear during your recovery period. There are many different kinds of braces, and your surgeon will choose the appropriate one for your surgery. The brace may need to be worn 24 hours a day or only when you are out of bed. Your physical therapist will teach you how to put the brace on and how to take it off. It would be to your benefit to have a caregiver attend one of your physical therapy treatment sessions so they are familiar with how to assist you with your transfers, exercises or with the stairs when you go home. They do not need to be present at every session. We will come to your room for your physical therapy sessions. You will recognize us by our Hunter Green Scrubs. You may need to purchase special equipment for your home to assist you as you recover. An elevated toilet seat, grab bars in the shower, shower bench, reachers, dressing sticks, long-handled shoehorns, and sock aids may also be helpful. Please bring any equipment you have to the hospital with you, such as your walker, crutches, or cane, if your doctor requires you to use them after your surgery. 
Check with your insurance company as some of these items may be covered expenses. You may also want to bring a lightweight bathrobe to walk in the halls and a pair of loose-fitting shorts. For the day of discharge, have elastic waist pants or shorts, a loose-fitting shirt without buttons, and slip-on shoes. Prepare your home by removing throw rugs, purchasing an extended toilet seat, and moving frequently used items to within a level reach. Prepare your refrigerator with items you can easily lift. You may also want to arrange a first floor setup for sleeping the first few weeks after your surgery. There is a direct relationship between the commitment on your part to exercise and the degree of success you will achieve in your recovery. These exercises may seem hard at first, but they will get easier the more you do them. Remember to look at your recovery in the long term. Some days will be better than others, and you may have a setback or two. But by continuing to exercise, you will have the best chance at a full recovery. The following are exercises you practice with us at the hospital and continue to do once you go home. Walker. Push the walker forward so that the back legs of the walker are in line with the tips of your toes. Place a foot in the middle of the walker area. Continue to push the walker forward while taking small steps with both feet. Keep your head up and your back straight while walking. Standing. Sit in a chair with armrest when possible. Slide your hips forward to the edge of the chair, bed, or toilet seat. Use your arms to push down on the edge of the bed, chair, or toilet seat and lift yourself up while keeping your back straight. Push down through your legs and keep your back straight when you stand. Do not pull yourself up with the walker because the walker may tip backwards. Make sure you are steady and balanced before taking a step. Sitting. Slowly back up to the chair, bed, or commode until you feel it against the back of your legs. With one arm at a time, reach back for the chair arms, bed, or toilet seat. Keep the walker with an easy reach. Going upstairs. Approach the stairs and put your toes about two inches from the first step. If you have only one railing on the step, fold the walker and place it in one hand. Because your walker has wheels, you will need to have someone else with you to secure the walker, or you could use a cane instead. Place your hand on the rail. Have your support person lift the walker and set it to the back of the step. Step up first with your stronger leg, and then bring your other leg up to the same step. At the top of the steps, have your support person unfold the walker and set it on the landing. Make sure you hear the walker click into locked position. Step up first with your stronger leg and then bring up your other leg. Going downstairs. Approach the steps and place your walker about two inches from the top step. If you only have one railing on the steps, have your support person fold the walker and place it on the first step. Because your walker has wheels, your support person will have to secure the walker on the step or you can use a cane instead. Place your one hand on the rail and you will have to start to bend your knees or reach for the walker or cane on the step below you. Step down with your weaker leg first and then bring your stronger leg down to the same step. At the bottom of the stairs, your support person will unfold the walker and set it back on the landing. Make sure you hear the walker click into locked position. Place both hands on the walker. Step down first with your weaker leg and then with your stronger leg. Proceed with your walk. Getting into bed. Push with your hands as you inch back across the bed. Try to scoot back far enough so that the backs of your knees are at the edge of the mattress. Lower yourself to lie down on one side by raising your legs one at a time and lowering your head at the same time. Use your elbow and other arm to assist moving without twisting. Once you are lying on your side, bend both knees and log roll onto your back. Keep your trunk aligned with your legs. Getting out of bed. Bend your knees so that your feet are flat on the bed. 
keeping your spine in a straight alignment, log roll to your side, slowly walk your legs forward until your feet are both hanging off the edge of the bed. Continue to scoot to the side of the bed until the backs of your knees are at the edge of the mattress. Be careful to avoid twisting. Keep your trunk aligned with your legs. Begin to sit yourself up by pressing down on the elbow that is underneath you and pressing with your other hand in front of your body. Once you are sitting up at the edge of the bed, place your hands on either side of you to maintain balance. Then begin to slide your hips forward until both of your feet are on the ground. Ankle pumps. Ankle or calf pumps help to aid circulation and the return of blood from the veins back to the heart. Point your toes and feet away from you, then pull them back toward you. With each movement, contract your muscles strongly and firmly. Quadriceps sets. Quadriceps sets aid in maintaining muscle tone and increasing circulation. Tighten your top thigh muscles for five seconds, then relax. If you are unable to get a contraction of your muscle, place a small towel under your foot and then try to press the back of your knee into the bed. Gluteal sets. Gluteal sets help in maintaining muscle tone and circulation. Pinch or squeeze your buttock muscles together and hold for five seconds, then relax.